Now to North Korea, a nation that has nuclear weapons and is tonight threatening to use them against the United States, vowing to attack Washington and engulf the nation's capital, quote, in a sea of flames. As you can imagine, this outburst has prompted a strong response from the White House. Our chief foreign affairs correspondent, Andrea Mitchell, monitoring developments from our D.C. newsroom. Andrea, good evening. Good evening, Brian. Tonight, the White House says the United States can defend itself against a North Korean missile attack, even as Pyongyang ratchets up its threats against the U.S. It was North Korea's toughest threat yet, announced on state TV. Since the United States is about to ignite a nuclear war, we will be exercising our right to preemptive nuclear attack. A recent government video shows a North Korean missile blowing up Manhattan. Pyongyang defied the world with a nuclear test last month and a missile test in December. But experts say the regime has not proved it can put a nuclear warhead on a missile that could reach the U.S. And all this may be backfiring. Today, China, North Korea's closest ally, voted with the U.S. for the toughest economic sanctions yet, hitting Kim Jong-un and his generals where it hurts. Luxury products like yachts, racing cars, and jewelry. One of the important provisions of this resolution today was to make clear that a, a wide range of luxury goods, and including some very specific luxury goods, aren't going to be able to be imported for the leadership of North Korea, which is living large while starving its people. Kim's love of Western products and sports was proved again only last week by his bizarre embrace of Dennis Rodman. Despite Pyongyang's newest threat, Today, the U.S. and South Korea continued scheduled training exercises in South Korea. While officials say the U.S. is well defended against missile attacks, South Korea and Japan are increasingly worried about their belligerent neighbor. This 28-year-old leader is either trying to embolden himself with the uh, military that run uh, the operations of North Korea, uh, or, or the other way around, the military is exerting force over this young 28-year-old leader uh, and their saber-rattling is serious, and, sh and we should take it serious. U.S. officials don't deny that the White House sent secret envoys to North Korea last year to test whether the new young leader wanted a better relationship with Washington. Now they have their answer, and it is not good. Brian? Hello, everyone. Welcome to GGN. Today is Friday, March 8th, 2013, and I'm Darko. All right, just going off the comments about um, uh, luxury items that they've sanctioned, uh, such as racing cars and yachts and stuff. I just find it kind of funny because you see Susan Rice of the UN saying that, you know, all this while they're starving their people. Well, the, the reality is, is that if you are not on with this global corporation uh, completely, that uh, you get punished like a little kid uh, if you don't hand over your sovereignty uh, to these globalists. And, and you know, Chavez and, and Venezuela is a good example of that and other countries as well. So if you're not on board with Washington, D.C., uh, then they'll, like Iran, then they'll uh, inflict these sanctions on you and it'll affect usually uh, just the regular people, not the leadership. Uh, these people know that and so they like to go out on TV and say how, uh, you know, these people are starving their people when really it's them that are doing it to get regime change or to bow down to whatever they want them to do. And then the comment about the bizarre embrace of Dennis Rodman. What was bizarre is that they actually went there, uh, he was just going there in the name of diplomacy. Now, whether he was a CIA agent, I don't know. Uh, the fact that they're really ramping all this up now with North Korea and the threats going back and forth between the South and North and the U.S. and, uh, and, and the North is kind of weird right after Rodman visited. So it does actually make me think that he was actually a clandestine. But again, you see the propaganda take effect in the common boards by people saying, oh, how about now, Dennis? How about now? He's such a great guy, huh? And so, you know, the fact is, is that they're offended. The, the West is offended that a country wants to assert its sovereignty. So um, I'm not afraid. I'm not going to lose any sleep about uh, getting attacked by North Korea. I'm not even sure if they could actually hit us. Uh, but the fact is, is that if the United States would stay the hell out of other people's business, uh, then we wouldn't have to worry so much about, uh, about these threats. So the whole thing about provoking, I've gone through this many times before. Uh, South Korea holds exercises with the United States and other countries, NATO countries, and that uh, almost on a monthly basis. Uh, they always have exercises going on uh, provoking North Korea. It's interesting, though, that China joined along with the sanctions, these UN sanctions. North Korea ready for all-out war, says Kim, so we'll go through all the news. All-out war is uh, being promised by Pyongyang amid recent developments that 
It followed its third nuclear test. The North Korean leader said the country was fully ready to fight a Korean-style all-out war. So, I guess the United States should know about that when they invaded the country the first time and got their asses kicked. And that's why they call it the Forgotten War. North Korea to start statewide military drills, says South. North Korea is conducting a series of military drills and is getting ready for a statewide war practice of an unusual scale, says South Korea's defense ministry. So, like I said, only South Korea and the West can hold exercises. Only the South Korea and Israel can have nuclear weapons. Of course, there are proxies like Jordan and Pakistan and countries that are usually on their knees, ready to satisfy them at their whim. But they do admit, the South admits that they it's not frequent that they hold these exercises. They say, we are watching the North's activities and stepping up readiness under the assumption that these drills can lead to provocation at any time. So, again, uh, they keep using that word provocation. It's a total double standard. The U.S. can fend off North Korea attacks as White House, so you saw this. But it goes on and says, but South Korea, Japan may have more to worry about. North Korea uh, abrogates deals with South. So North Korea has canceled all agreements on non-aggression with South Korea and cut the hotline between uh, Pyongyang and Seoul following the UN approval of a new series of sanctions against the country. So the North and South signed a non-aggression pact in 1991 to support the peaceful settlement of disputes and prevent accidental military clashes. So the CPRK, or Committee for the Peaceful Reunification of Korea, uh, said that they condemned the new round of sanctions and said it was evidence that the U.S. and its puppets in the South were hell-bent on confrontation. North-South relations have gone so far beyond the danger line that they are no longer uh, repairable, or reparable, and an extremely dangerous situation is prevailing on the Korean Peninsula where nuclear war may break out right now. South Korea warns to destroy North as words, uh, war of words escalates. So South Korea has warned North Korea will perish from the earth if Pyongyang goes ahead with its threats to attack the South. Although atomic bombs were used twice in the past to end World War II, the nuclear bomb attacks, uh, yeah, if the nuclear bomb attacks a free and democratic society such as Republic of Korea, mankind would not forgive it. It's funny, though, because uh, this is going to be all, all, all over the news, and I don't think anything is going to become of it, and it usually never does. Um... But what's going on in Syria? Uh, Syria, you have the the Western-backed rebels that are, have kidnapped and are holding hostage UN workers, UN peacekeepers. Uh, uh, that's that's pretty obvious right there. Um, Dennis Rodman for and of course because they're getting their butts kicked, so they're getting desperate. Dennis Rodman for ambassador to North Korea. The basketball star has been demonized for his peace visit to North Korea. Doesn't he know that when? Uh, the empire has declared some small, poor country worthy of hate and death. All patriots are supposed to salute. One thing no patriot ever s is supposed to do is remember the empire's record of war aggression and mass murder against the North Koreans. And and that's and that's the irony is that the United States has bases. They're occupying places around the world, especially post World War II. They had the entire world. And they were talking about communists and, and Russia, um, you know, the threat, which is one of the reasons why they went in there. And and then you see who North Korea's attacked. And then you see, like, uh, how Americans in the, in, in the common boards, how they react to this. They're just totally delusional, really. You know, but like one person said, the real thing to be scared about is that, you know, it doesn't have to actually be North Korea that attacks. It could just be um, something like, a, like the Jericho series or the new Red Dawn. Um, where they replaced it with what? With North Korea instead of the Chinese. So I found that all this kind of tying in together um, because that's what they did in the Jericho series. They, they, you know, it was it was these bombs that were set off. It was kind of this, you know, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but it was basically a quote, false, false flag blamed on Iran and North Korea. I had nothing really to do with China. China was supposedly helping. And then you have China uh, uh, instituting these sanctions with the U.N., uh, Malaysia invaded 100 uh, terrorists land on beaches. Western media is mute. So uh, another story to overshadow with this North Korea thing. Hundreds of heavily armed terrorists have crossed from the Philippines and land in the eastern Malaysian state of Sabah. Dozens are already dead. And the Malaysian military has brought aircraft and armor to confront the audacious, bizarre invasions, uh, scattering middle militants into the jungles of this island. A seemingly headline news event, the invasion has been downplayed and spun by Western media many calling militant al-Qaeda-linked terrorists an armed Filipino clan. Yeah, that's how I first saw it reported. 
So it goes on here, it says, while the West pleads ignorance over the identity of the militants held up in the jungles of Malaysia, the militant organizations themselves have declared thousands more and reinforcements are being arranged in the Philippines to join and exasperate the conflict. So, uh, but it goes on here, it says thousands of these uh, Taosug from Baslan Sulu have sailed to Sabah to reinforce members of the so-called Royal Army of the Sultanate of Sulu who are fighting it out with the Malaysian Security Forces, a Moral National Liberation Front official said on Tuesday. This uh, Moral National Liberation Front, of course, is one of the several of Al-Qaeda's franchises in Southeast Asia and spun off uh, from a famous uh, terrorist organization, Abu Sayyaf, a U.S. State Department listed foreign terrorist organization with direct ties to Al-Qaeda says the Philippines terrorist organization receives funding and support from Saudi Arabia. They have operations uh, going right now in Mali, Libya, Syria, Iraq, and of course in the Caucasus. And get this, a Syria uprising. That's what they call it still. Don't know why. It says here, Mossad, Blackwater, and CIA led operation in Homs. So it goes on here and says an Arab news agency is reporting that CIA, Mossad, Blackwater agents are involved in military um, operations in Syria. Under American Gulf sponsorship, the office includes American, French, and Gulf, specifically from Qatar and Saudi Arabia intelligence agents, as well as CIA, Mossad, Blackwater agents, and members of the Syrian Transitional, uh, Transitional Council. It says Qatar has also made deals with Israeli and American companies to arm the armed groups, and Gulf countries have been financing the agreements. So that's interesting because uh, people notice this. A couple of people left comments about this picture. All's fair in love and war. Syrian rebels try kidnapping to fundraise the revolution and they said these guys look like uh like they're you know uh, basically sas or something here you go there that's verified uh west legitimacy collapses as it props up hostage taking terrorists despite like this criminal act of terrorism directed at the united nations the west has spun downplayed and otherwise ignored the incident an incident that had the syrian army been behind would have invoked howling indignation frothing condemnation and in all likelihood full-scale military intervention they say the people of the west must realize their governments have descended into a dangerous psychosis and has abandoned even a face value commitment to maintaining a rule of law philippines demand release of u.n peacekeepers in syria the philippines has demanded the immediate release of 21 of its nationals working as u.n observers who have been kidnapped by rebels in syria so does that have anything to do with what's going on in Malaysia? I don't know. Syrian insurgents training at Assad Citadel. American, French, British instructors. Ooh, instructors. Could it be the same Blackwater, CIA, Mossad? Are providing training to the Syrian terrorists at, at camp in J Jordanian desert. So it can be used as a bridgehead uh, if Washington finds that Assad is going to use chemical weapons. Again, another false flag. Uh, uh, red alert here. As British Al-Qaeda airlift, 3,000 tons of weapons uh, to fuel serious destruction. They keep, uh, you see in the media, they keep calling for arming them. It turns out, however, according to the London Telegraph, that the U.S. and Britain have already been arming terrorists operating in Syria for some time, including this massive air airlift of 3,000 tons of weapons sent across Syria's border with Jordan and NATO member Turkey. So that's part of the delusional uh, uh, thinking and the psychosis of the Western, Western masses is that they don't see the connection that they're aiding and abetting terrorists and terrorism. In the name of fighting terrorism. Turkish people oppose war against Syria. It says here that Turkish people are completely against this war, in excess of 85%. The, the Turkish people know what it is like for their country to be invaded back in, back in the day where the Greeks and Russians and everyone attacked their country trying to dismember it like what is happening in Syria. So he says there's a lot of solidarity there. Syria's Assad hails Turkey anti Erdogan opposition. So President Assad on Thursday hailed Turkish opposition to Prime Minister Erdogan's backing for the revolt that began in Syria two years ago. So it prompted Erdogan to issue a stinging criticism of the politicians asking why they were meeting with such a dictator. Assad told the, the party there was a need to distinguish between the stance of the Turkish people who support stability in Syria and the positions of Erdogan's government, which support terrorism, extremism, and destabilization in the region. Speaking of dictators, Libya women face Islamist rise since the fall of Gaddafi. Interesting, this little propaganda place. Uh, women played a major role in the civil war against Muammar Gaddafi, massing for protests. Complete malarkey, because I've seen videos of women, just strictly women, uh, cheering and supporting for him. How Gaddafi improved the situation for Libyan women. His quote was, I promised my mother to improve the situation for women in Libya. He didn't just support him, he also believed in their abilities and emancipation. More, moreover, in a society where being a woman is not only fully appreciated. So...
but now they don't have that. Thank you.